The DJI Mini 2 was released in late 2020 and was the go-to budget-friendly small drone. Now, I got this in 2020 and I've been using it since then. So let's just see how it stacks up in 2023 and see, is it even worth picking up? So I mainly use this drone for stills, but its video offerings are pretty good. So this drone shoots in 4K, it'll do 2.7K, it'll do 1080 if you're really conscious on space or if you want to go for a higher frame rate. Uh, I find 4K fine, but again, I'm not a cinematographer. <laughs> Uh, if I'm throwing this drone up, it is primarily taking like a static shock or a static shot or like one axis movement kind of thing for like B-roll or an establishing shot. I'm not going to be doing any crazy FPV type of things. Now, that's not to say you can't. Many people have done and it looks great. So like I was saying, you can shoot in a bunch of different resolutions and all that's easily controlled in the app. You just tap and then you can swap to whatever. I've never run into any issues where it says you can't use this because your SD card's too bad. I use a 32 gigabyte basic SanDisk micro SD card and it works fine. Video wise, it's fantastic. Now we come to stills, which is my main use for this drone. In the drone, you've got a 12 megapixel sensor. 12 megapixels doesn't sound like a lot these days because you get offerings from like Canon and Sony with upwards of like 50 megapixels. But 4K is eight megapixels and I can stand about a foot away from a 60 inch 4K TV and everything looks fine. So by my reckoning, 12 megapixels is fine. Particularly when you combine that with Lightroom's new super resolution mode, which essentially doubles your resolution, right? You can do panels with the drone in the app. My only complaint uh, is that it saves them to a different directory in the SD card. So Lightroom, for whatever reason, on my iPad or both computers just does not seem to find that folder. It'll find everything in like the DCIM folder, but if I want to find the images for the panel, I have to like drag them into Lightroom myself. I rarely actually use the panels in the DJI Fly app. My preferred method, if I want to take like a really long kind of cinematic looking panorama, I guess, is just fly the drone up, take a shot, pivot a bit, take a shot, pivot a bit, take a shot. Um, now, the newest offering from DJI, the Mini 3, the gimbal will actually rotate and you can take vertical videos and photos. My workaround for this is, for videos, just film everything 90 degrees down so that then you can rotate afterwards and it looks all right. But for photos, like, what I've found is to take the shot, rotate the gimbal up, take another shot, rotate the gimbal up, rotate the gimbal up. And in the app, you can set that. You can set it so you're allowed to move the gimbal up. And this gives you a pretty good image. You can take, I'd say, a decent four by three vertical image with this method. And of course, then you get the resolution of it being bumped. But the images wise, I've printed images from that to about A4 size and they look absolutely fine. I could probably print them to be A3, A2 and still be fine. Uh, I normally do run them through the super resolution thing in Lightroom, but I really don't think that's necessary. That's just me kind of messing around with new interesting tools. So like I said in the intro, this is their like budget friendly beginner drone, right? And in all of the marketing and in all the reviews for this drone, they say, oh, it's less than 250 grams. It means you, doesn't, you don't need to register it. Now I live in the Republic of Ireland and if the drone didn't have a camera, that would be true. But because it has the camera, this thing could weigh two grams and you'd still have to register it. So what that entails is it's been a while now. You go onto the IAA website. I think it is, you fill out a form and you watch a few videos and then you get your pilot number and your pilot number has to be written on your drone somewhere. So I have it on here written in Sharpie and it's lasted for years. Uh, but there's companies that will like print a nice little small sticker. Now I know that differs from country to country, but as far as I know, most of Europe or the EU anyway is kind of on the same page there. So if it has a camera, you need to register it. I think it's because of GDPR. So that's just something to be aware of if you are in the EU or Ireland specifically. Now, I'm sure you could fly it and no one's gonna hunt you down, but let's say worst comes to worst and you hit a bird and your drone falls and hit someone on the head and there's a thing, it's probably best to be completely above the board. Now, uh, as for flying, it's dead handy. You press and then press and hold and the drone turns on. You do the same with the controller. The controller is super comfortable. It's kind of like big and bulky. So you do that, 
turn everything on, plug that into the phone, USB-C, uh, the drone also comes with a micro B if your phone still has that, or lightning. Um, then for taking off, I don't actually bother with a takeoff or landing pad, I find them a bit like unnecessarily clunky. Uh, so what I do is I will hand hold the drone, so I'll just kind of hold it there on the vents like that. And then what I do, but I hold the sticks inverted, so like angry eyebrows, right? And that turns the blades on and it just kind of hovers. So then what I do is I quickly like push it down, or pull it down rather, and then it like will hover in the air, no issue at all, and I can take off and do whatever. I get about half an hour battery if I'm near what I'm shooting and I'm not in sports mode. If I'm kind of far away or if I'm on like the beach and I want to get like a shot off the coast, I'll typically throw it into sports mode and just zoom out. Uh, and then when time comes to land the drone, I'll just hold down on the stick, like I'll fly it to like near me, push down on the stick and put my hand under it and it'll like kind of stop for a second and then it'll go down slowly. And the reason I do that as opposed to a landing pad, like I said before, is it's one less thing to carry in my camera bag. And also I don't want it like kicking up sand or like hitting grass. I think it's also just me being lazy and not wanting to carry and unfold the thing. And then if you're in a rush leaving, it's something that gets left behind. And I've never had a problem. Uh, like really you shouldn't be flying your drone super far away that you can't see where you took off from. Like you always need to keep VLOS visual line of sight with the drone here in Europe, that's kind of a thing. And also in the bottom left-hand corner, you have like a Google Maps type thing. So it'll show you where the drone took off from, where the drone is now and the path it took to get there. So I've never needed like a neon orange pad to land on. So since this has been released, there's new offerings from DJI. They have their Mini 3 and Mini 3 Pro or their 3 Pro. The, the naming conventions for these things kind of get out of hand really fast. Their new Mini will do all the video things this does. And it also takes 48 megapixel stills. I, ha I haven't looked into it, but I'm imagining what that's doing is it's actually moving the sensor and creating like a tiny little panorama. That's what a lot of um, micro four thirds mirrorless bodies do to take a larger resolution image. So that's that would be handy if you're wanting to do massive print or crop in a lot but like I'm saying with the super resolution in Lightroom and just being able to like take panoramas I, I don't see it being that big of an upgrade but this new offering from DJI also will rotate the gimbal so you can take a vertical video vertical photos now I don't need it for vertical photos like I said I already have my work around where I just create a panorama vertically but for vertical videos I think that would be enough to sway me if I didn't already have a drone so I had a look at where I could get this drone used. So I think I paid about 500 euros for this when it was released. I got it at Harvey Norman here in Ireland because it was actually cheaper to get it from there than from DJI when you included shipping and I could just go there and pick it up or whatever. The cheapest I could find it for on MPB, which is where I get all my used equipment, uh, not a sponsor, just a fan, uh, was about 424 euro. Now they charge a 10 euro shipping fee. So that's 434 euro for a used one. Now that was in like new condition and they even had one that had only been like used twice apparently. You're essentially getting a new Mini 2 for that price. I, I then had a look on eBay, adverts, done deal, kind of like these marketplaces as opposed to these resellers and the price seemed about that as well. I couldn't really find one that was cheap. So that's not a massive decrease in value when you consider stuff like the Mini 2 SE by DJI, which it doesn't do 4K video, it'll only do 2.7, which is still a lot and like, but if you're looking just for stills, I'd actually probably recommend that drone over getting a used Mini 2. So I looked and you can get, at the time of the recording, you can get a Mini 3, brand new from DJI for 480 euros, or if you, that's uh, including the same controller, but if you want their fancy controller with a screen that's like, doesn't mean you have to use your phone, that's 600 and 650? 650 euro. So that means you can get a used Mini 2 for like 424 euro or a brand new Mini 3 with the like stitching for images and the vertical video, vertical images for just an extra 46 euro. So I actually don't, like I went into this and I was like, of course it's gotta be worth it, right? Old gear is really good and old gear is really good. But I think in this instance, you should probably just get a brand new Mini 3. Now, if you have a friend who's upgraded and just is like, hey, I'll give you a good deal on my old Mini 2, don't 
completely discount this drone. This is a very like useful enthusiast level drone that I've got some amazing stills from and some decent video. But if I was in the market, I don't think I would get this. Now, I'd probably get the Mini 3. If you like the stills I was showing off in this video, please check out my Instagram and Facebook page. They'll be linked down below. Uh, I'm trying to make prints happen, but it's kind of a whole thing with online services. They take a massive cut and in person, then I have to do it all in person. So yeah, thanks for watching.